These are like, these are my babies. So I've been doing this for not too long actually, but it is a pretty time consuming project. But I've always wanted to knit Tetris blocks. Um, I haven't played Tetris in a while, but I just loved the idea of playing with a block that was a pillow that was a Tetris block. Um, I thought it would be a cool idea. The blocks I have are all five. There's five Tetris blocks. You have the classic L shape. That is nice. Um, my personal favorite, which is the T or like the little triangle one. This one's cool. Um, the even square, the little zigzag step shape, and then the long one that is everyone's favorite because it comes and it saves the day. Or at least for me, when I used to play, when I used to play Tetris, my strategy was always like build up a bunch on the side and then just leave one empty little column space and then the stick one would come save the day at the end and it would like get you a big combo or something. So I actually don't have that much else to say um, other than just to show off how cool these look and um, I'm gonna show you how I made them. So this is how you knit a Tetris block. <laughs> a Tetris block is composed of four cubes and each cube is gonna be composed of six square sides. So when I was planning this, I thought at first I needed a square um, that was gonna lay as flat as possible. So my first thought was the garter stitch because that's gonna give you a nice kind of even panel. But then I realized that, that eventually those panels are going to be used, they're gonna be sewn together to create a cube and the cube's gonna be stuffed with stuffing. So there's gonna be some pushing against those walls. So it's, if you were just doing a flat panel, that's gonna have some bulge to it. So I thought the stockinette stitch, even though it starts to curl quite quickly when you're just making that first square, I decided that that, um, curl of the stock in it could be used to kind of reinforce the square, the flatness of the square when you come to the cube. So I'll show you that when I get to that step. <laughs> so for now, we're just going to knit our first square panel. So to do that, I'm just gonna cast on 10 stitches. And you can make this as big or as small as you want, as complicated or as simple as you want. Um, I like to think that I'm somewhere in the middle between complicated and easy with this one. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. I'm gonna turn it around and I'm going to just knit this first row straight through. So if you cast on, you basically want an even square. So we're gonna cast on 10 and we're gonna knit until it looks like as even as a square as possible. And as I was saying, you can make this as complicated and as big as you want, but just remember that you're gonna have to do this a lot of times because <laughs> you're doing six sides, six sides to the square. So that's six of these that you're gonna have to knit times the four cubes that you're gonna need to do for the Tetris blocks. And then multiply that by the five different types of shapes that you have or, or whatever you're actually gonna do with the blocks. So you can really kind of load on your workload if you kind of overdo it on these first little squares. So turning this around, we've knit all the way across and I am going to do just a garter stitch on the first and last stitch. And then the stockinette stitches will be these middle eight stitches here. So to do that, garter stitch, you're always knitting that stitch on every stitch. So it's always, this one's always gonna be knitted, the first and the last one we're gonna do. And then I'm just gonna purl these eight stitches all the way through. And then I'm going to knit that last stitch in the row. So this happens really quickly actually. So I'll go straight through purling, 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 and then the last stitch, we knit it to create the garter stitch. And we flip it around, we're on the knit side, and already my garter stitch is starting to build up. 
or sorry, my stockinette stitch is already starting to build up with the garter stitch for the border. So the garter stitch for the border is just going to, I don't know, I, I find that it helps it lay a little bit flat, but you still get the kind of the little curve, the bulge from the stockinette. And the garter stitch border helps you out when you're weaving the sides together to create the cube. So on this side, I'm gonna knit all the way through again. So knit the garter stitch and then knit the knits that you see. So knit straight through. And then when we flip it around, we're going to do that same purl pattern as before. So knit, 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 knit knit and then turn it around and we've got our purl side so we're going to knit that first stitch for the garter and then purl eight stitches and then knit the last stitch and that's your pattern so i'm going to do this until i've built up an even square so you can stop and look at it um, depending on the materials you're using it you might finish before me, um, but I'm gonna keep doing this. Um, one last note actually about the materials I'm using. In my little experiments, <laughs> you also, the size of your yarn and the size of your knitting needles is also going to help reinforce your cube. So I decided I needed um, a structure that was, so I went for the stockinette stitch, but I also wanted to make this as rigid and kind of tough as possible because I wanted it to be as straight and flat, like a wall as, as, as it could possibly be. So I'm actually using a kind of chunky yarn. I don't know if it's technically, it says it was chunky yarn on the label, but it's, it's not very thick actually. Um, it's chunky yarn and the knitting needles I'm using are five millimeters. And this is actually one millimeter smaller than the recommended size on the label for this. So everything is kind of tight. So this is very kind of retaining its shape. It's very tight. It's still malleable. It's still kind of stretchy, but it's definitely tighter than a normal fabric for like a hat or something like that. So knitting it is not quite as easy. You can get kind of tough and sticky as I'm going, but that's gonna help you out later when we're weaving the cube together. Um, so that's how you knit the side. I'm going to finish this up. Um, I'll film myself doing this, but I'll do a little fast forward thing and then I'll show you what it looks like when I'm finished. So here's the finished square that I just knit and I just did a normal cast off. You can do whatever type of cast off you want. It's not really going to have a huge effect on it, but it's a, the cast off I did, I actually don't even know the name of it, but it encourages the kind of natural curl of the stockinette stitch. So if you look at it on the side, it kind of lays like this, kind of wants to curl up in on itself. So normally, if you wanted to knit something that was going to lay absolutely flat, the stockinette stitch is probably not the best bet for that. Um, and to kind of fight against that curl, I still did the two garter stitches here on the sides to create somewhat of a flat edge. But technically, you probably could do stockinette all the way, but I think then it would curl in a different direction. I'm not entirely sure. Anyways, this is the curl that I wanted to do. So you've got stockinette on this side, your purls on this side. The stockinette stitches are going to be the ones facing outside. So these are going to be the faces to your cube. So now these squares, this is going to go in my pile of squares right here. I have six now and we are ready to build my cube for the block. So I can put my knitting needles aside. You're going to need a tapestry needle. Um, to weave these sides together. And you're probably not gonna need any extra yarn for this. So each one of these, I've got six sides to my square and I've purposely kept the tail ends on these squares pretty long because I'm just gonna use these 
to weave, just so I minimize the amount of yarn that I'm using for this. So I'm going to thread the yarn through my tapestry needle here. And I've learned, you don't need to tie a knot on the end, by the way. I just like to hold it like this, with this tail sticking through it. And then I just kind of hold on to it when I'm doing the weaving. So I'm going to match the top of one of these square panels with the bottom of one of these square panels. So here's the top where I cast it off. And here is the bottom where I cast it on. I'm going to sew them together like this. And I'm actually gonna pinch them kind of like this, and then I'm going to sew them along here. So this is going to create the corner of your cube, or one corner of the cube. So diving right in, I've got my yarn here, and I'm just gonna stick it through and pull it through like this. I don't even put my needle through these cast off and cast on rows right here because the loops are pretty big. I'm just going to leave those as they are and instead I stick the needle through right underneath those casted on loops. So let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see. So I'm going to put my needle right in through here and then make sure it matches that on the other side right underneath that casted off row. So pull that through, pull it tight, and we're just going to repeat that down the whole side here, back and forth. And then at the end, I stick it through some of these last kind of top loops here on the corner and pull that through twice just to reinforce the corner there. And then you can, if you pull it out, got it nicely sewn together. And so these are two sides to your cube. So here's, this is the corner that is gonna form. If you want, you can kind of weave in through these larger loops here kind of pull them together to create kind of a sharper corner edge if you want, but I'm fine with how it looks just like that. So now I'm going to take my tapestry needle and just add on the next panel. So this is the casted off edge and then this is the casted on edge for that one. I'm gonna pinch them together like this and sew them together. So put the needle through put the yarn through the needle, pinch it through, and just start weaving. Adding the next panel, I'm going to do it the same way. And then with four of these together now, we can sew them together to create the sides. So we'll just put them together like this, pinch this end and this end together, and we're gonna sew it right there. 
So take the yarn, put it through. And we're gonna sew right here. Cool, so I'm gonna keep my yarn on my needle um, because we're gonna just go right into sewing the top part on. But here is the cube. It's already starting to form pretty nicely. I've got the walls built up and those cast it on and cast it on lips create kind of a nice corner border. It looks cool. So got two more sides I have to put on. First one is the top one. So I'm just gonna put it on. It doesn't really matter what direction you put it on. You can spend a lot of time figuring out which, which way it looks best. There is gonna be kind of a little bumpiness to it. So there, just pick whatever way is gonna be a, a better fit for um, your cube in particular. Um, so I'm just gonna set it right here, I think. When you're doing the top, you're just gonna do basically the same thing. So you're gonna take the edge of the wall here and just kind of curl it down a little bit, pinch it with the bottom of this side like this, so you have an edge. So you want to just cr keep creating an edge there. So stick it through. And then there's obviously, I mean, this is, this is arts and crafts. So there's no, it's not, there's really not a huge science to this. Um, it's gonna not be as precise as maybe it could be. You could probably do it in a more precise manner than I am. I just am trying to keep a nice kind of enforced border here that's gonna look nice and pinching it with the other end of the wall. Um, so there's not really like a specific thing you should be watching out for. Just make sure that it looks how you want your cube to look. So there's that side done. I've still got a lot of yarn with me, so I'm going to keep using it. So I'm gonna pinch this side with this side and I'm gonna sew these together now. So I've got the top firmly on. Um, I'm just going to, with all these little extra end tails that I haven't used, um, I'm just going to sew them in a little bit to reinforce what I've already sewn. So I'm just gonna kind of double back in a few places. And once you have the end bit short enough, so like this, I'm just going to put it through, pull it through on the inside and pull it all the way through. And then I'm just gonna let it sit there. So there's no need to tie any knots or anything like that. Nothing's gonna come done. This is all very, by the end of um, putting the block together, it's gonna be really reinforced anyway, so you're not gonna have to worry about anything coming undone or anything like that. So I'm gonna do that for all these extra end bits, and then I'll do the bottom part. Now I'm ready for the last bit. It is looking a little shabby, but remember we haven't put any stuffing in it. So when we put stuffing, it will kind of puff out and be a little more of a cube looking structure. Um, so I have the last panel here. I'm just gonna set that on top. Um, actually, I'm going to, I'll do it right here. I think that looks, that will go best. So I'm just going to weave this one on top. I'm going to weave um, all of the sides except for one of them. Um, so just weave three sides together and then we'll leave a little opening and put stuffing through there. So do the same thing that we've done before. Pinch the sides to create a nice little border there. And then just start sewing. Cool. 
And now is the fun part. You have to put in the stuffing. So I'm just using normal polyester stuffing, but you can use any kind of filling that you want, honestly. Um, and just uh, stuff it in there. <laughs> um, you don't want to do too much because you still want it to not have quite as much of a bulge. Um, but because of the stockinette stitch and the structure of it, it's going to retain its shape pretty well. So I just put in a little bit, kind of spread it out into the corners and on the edges. And then can I take a look at it see what it looks like? Give it a few squeezes, push it down. I think that is actually a perfect amount. So you can tell I've done this a lot of times today. So with these last remaining um, end tails, I'm just going to close up this last edge. Actually, I think I'm gonna take a little bit out. I think it's a little bit overstuffed. So pull that out. Spread that out again. So I'm gonna put the yarn through the tapestry needle again, and I'm just gonna sew this final corner shut. So pinch the sides together, and then just sew. Well, first actually I'm gonna sew the corner. Pinch the sides together. And sew right underneath the edge. And then once you're finished with, I've just got a little bit left on this tail end, you can just stab it through. I stab it through and I like to pull it through the other end right here. And then just cut it right on the edge there. And then kind of push the rest of the yarn in there. And it'll just sit right there in the middle. It won't come undone. Um, at first I was really paranoid when I was making these and I felt, felt like I had to tie a bunch of knots, but you never have to tie a knot when you're knitting. It's knitting. You're not tying knots. So um, here's your cube. I've got one last little tail bit. Um, I could use this to help connect it with the rest of the cubes, but I think just to make it look nice for this final bit, I'll put this through too and hide it. Poke that through, pull it through, cut it, and then pull everything out and make it nice. So there is your cube. It looks nice. Um, it's kind of a perfect cube. The stuffing is good. It helps it retain its shape. And because of the stockinette stitch, We've got this nice stockinette pattern, but it's reinforced by these kind of thick corners here, and it makes kind of a nice border. So the cube on its own is cool enough. <laughs> you just would make like a cool toy or present for something or decoration. You can use these for a lot of different projects, but for this, we are making Tetris blocks. So we need three more cubes. So luckily I have Three more cubes and I have been knitting like crazy and I have done way too much. <laughs> so I'm ready to form this Tetris block and I'm actually, this one I already know is going to be the little, the zigzag, the step shape that everybody hates. Um, it's the one that looks like this or that depending on how you want to place it. So this one is going to be like this. So. To make this block, we're just basically going to sew these cubes together. So I'm going to sew these two together, these two together, and then we'll join them together right here. So when you're sewing these together, you kind of want to look for the best configuration that's going to make the cubes look as best as possible. So the direction of your stockinette is going to affect this. 
Also, the border is going to affect this. So you just kind of have to rotate them to see what is a nice fit. And I think this might look good, actually. This, you could spend hours trying to figure the, out the best configuration. But I think this might be it. Maybe, I don't know. It's an art form, you know? Um, so, to sew them together, I've already got a really long tail that I left on this cube that I knit the other day. Um, and we're just gonna use this to sew them together. So, use your tapestry needle, put it through, and going to kind of follow the same method that we were doing when we were making the cubes in the first place. We're just gonna kind of pinch these together by the, the border right here. And we're gonna sew um, through this bit right here. So you're gonna stick your needle underneath this bit right here, come out on this end right here. So for this first bit, um, it's almost coming out directly from the corner. So I'm going to stick it in almost directly so it's going from corner to corner. So I'm gonna stick it through and come out underneath that border bit and just pull it through and pull it tight. And for the rest of it, I'm gonna kind of squeeze it and pinch it. And now I'm gonna sew underneath one of these borders and come out on the other end right here, if you can see, and then pull that through. And then you're just gonna work your way back and forth. It's gonna be kind of tough because you are sticking the needle through multiple layers of knitting here. Um, but your needle will kind of just naturally fall through the loops between the stitches and it shouldn't be too difficult. Stick it through, pull it tight. And as you're doing this, because we're knitting underneath the lip of this border, it kind of reinforces the border and makes it kind of stick out a little bit more. Put that through my needle again, that fell off. And then when you reach the corner here, you just kind of kind of feel for what feels best <laughs> for your cubes. Um, you'll just, you'll, you'll see on your own what looks best and what makes them kind of match up the best. With these two sewn together, you're just gonna connect the pairs. I'm gonna connect them right here. And I'm gonna use this yarn that I've already been using on this long one. And connecting, I've learned from experience making the other blocks um, that it's kind of difficult when you're connecting it with a weird kind of corner like this and at an angle. And so you just kind of have to just be careful. <laughs> That's the only advice. I kind of squish my blocks down like this. Um, and you just try to make it look as nice as possible. It usually works fine. So I've sewn all of those together and I actually doubled up a couple times. I had a bunch of extra yarn so I just kind of went around a couple times and reinforced these corner bits and I'm finished with this block and it looks cool. It looks just like the tester's block should be. 
course, this is, I mean, this is Arts as Crafts, this is knitted, so it's gonna be a little bit lumpy. You're not gonna have perfect cubes. Um, if you wanted something perfect, I mean, knitting is definitely not what you should do for this. <laughs> but for what it is, um, a pillow or a toy, um, I think it's perfect. It retains its shape and the corners are reinforced, so it has kind of a nice edge that kind of mimics the look of the Tetris pieces in the actual game. And this block can actually join the rest of the Tetris blocks that I've already finished. So here's all the other blocks that I've finished, and I kind of wish I had color coordinated them slightly better, but I'm planning on just giving these away as a little gift for a niece. And so for a toy, I think these are perfect colors for a kid. Um, but they're very tough. I mean, they're not gonna come apart. They're pretty versatile and you can stack them or play with them however you want. Um, you can kind of create a cool little sculpture or something if you really wanted to. The most difficult block to make, I think would have to be this square one just because ye, there were a lot of, um, actually no, I think it was this one, the T shape because there were a bunch of corners that you had to worry about here. Um, but I mean, for all of these, I just did the exact same method that I did for this one that I showed you. So it really wasn't that difficult. It just took a lot of time because <laughs> you're knitting, um, you're knitting little squares and then you're putting those squares together to form cubes and then you're sewing those cubes together to form the blocks. But hopefully this was um, fun for you to watch and inspired you to start your own little project. I highly recommend making something with cubes, some sort of sculpture or block pattern pillow, just because it, it looks really cool and it kind of feels really fun to just play with something that you've created yourself. Thanks for watching. Um, feel free to subscribe and like this video and I will see you next time.